All right, RNA genomes, these are interesting because the cell can't copy them. The cell doesn't have uh, RNA enzymes that can replicate RNA genomes. Um, can make small RNAs, as you know, like interfering RNAs, but it cannot copy long DNA genomes. So all virus genomes encode their own RNA-dependent RNA polymerase. That's how we abbreviate these enzymes, RDRP. And these enzymes make new genomes from RNA viruses, genomes, and they also make mRNAs. And this can be a little confusing, the difference between a genome and an mRNA, especially if we're talking about a, a plus strand virus, but we'll try and sort it out. And of course, the mRNA, again, made by these viruses is ribosome readable. Here's one class of uh, genome, the double-stranded RNA viruses. They have double-stranded RNA genome, just like, um, well, just like double-stranded DNA or single-stranded DNA. Double-stranded RNA cannot be translated. So you'd think, well, there's a plus strand in there, right? Why can't the ribosome read it? It can't access it. So in order for double-stranded RNA viruses to be translated, you have to make mRNA, and that's done by copying the negative strand to make a plus strand. So that's just something you're going to have to remember that, again, the only, well, not again, but the only RNA that can be translated is a single-stranded mRNA. They make proteins, and they make new genomes from this single strands by copying them, and they encapsidate them. There are quite a few uh, interesting viruses in this category. There are a number of human viruses that cause gastroenteritis. So when you, in the winter time, when you get sick, you're vomiting, and you have diarrhea, some of these viruses can be the cause of that. And the real viruses, not only do they have double-stranded RNA genomes, but it's broken up into segments. So each particle can have uh, 10 or 11 double-stranded RNA segments. The single-stranded RNA viruses now, let's look at those with a plus-stranded genome. And that means that the genome, of course, is mRNA. A lot of viruses here, these are eight different families of uh, viruses that infect mammals. Some of them you may recognize, poliovirus and rhinoviruses, uh, members of the picornavirus family, uh, caliciviruses and astroviruses both cause gastroenteritis. There are a lot of viruses that can make you uh, rather uncomfortable uh, in this sense. So the double-stranded RNA viruses, these and there are others as well. Uh, SARS coronavirus, rather large virus. Um, the, the artery viruses, um, we won't really talk. These are mainly animal pathogens. Flaviviruses, yellow fever virus, West Nile, hepatitis C virus. Retroviruses like HIV, HTLV, uh, 1 and 2. And togaviruses, rubella virus, and viruses that cause encephalitis. So let's talk about uh, these genomes a bit. They're all single strands of RNA. They're plus polarity, so they can be translated. And they vary in length, depending on the virus. The longest uh, RNA genomes, 28 to 33 kilobases. So you notice that this is not as long as the longest DNA virus. These are rather shorter. We think RNA is, is more fragile. It's more subject to mutation than DNA. So there's probably a, an upper limit on the size of an RNA genome. And that may be it although maybe we just haven't found the biggest one yet. And you can see the other viruses have different sized genomes. Um, these viruses typically have open reading frames. That's the green part of the RNA. It's, a, it's an mRNA that can be translated into protein. They have five prime untranslated regions. That's UTR. This is not translated into protein. They have three prime untranslated regions. Some of them have a poly A tail. And uh, some of them are capped at the 5' prime end. You probably know that for a messenger RNA to be efficiently translated, it needs a 5' prime cap and it needs a 3' prime poly A tail. But not every virus follows these rules. The flavi viruses aren't polyadenylated. And the picornas don't have a cap. They have a protein at the 5' prime end. And we'll talk about how they get around those requirements with those unusual structures. So what's the strategy? Well, you know that plus sense can be mRNA. All right, and so for these viruses, in fact, the genome is translated as soon as it gets into the cell. So this is the kind of virus that I think should, should win, but it doesn't because it's so efficient. The genome gets made into protein as soon as it gets into the cell. The genome then has to be replicated. Nothing fancy here. It goes from a plus to a minus stand, strand copy, and then the minus strand is copied back into a plus. All this minus strand serves is a template to make more plus strands. That's all it is. All right, so that's our, our plus sense minuses. Now, 
there is a class of viruses that have plus stranded RNA genomes, but they go through a DNA intermediate. And those are the retroviruses. This one viral family, retroviridae, uh, there are two human pathogens <coughs> here, human immunodeficiency virus, HIV, and human T lymphotropic virus, HTLV, and they're HTLV1 and 2. Now, this is unusual in a number of ways. First of all, the RNA in the virion is copied to first a negative strand DNA, then that's made double stranded. Uh, this is done by a viral enzyme, reverse transcriptase. And that is, in fact, the enzyme that David Baltimore, along with Howard Temin, discovered a number of years ago. Uh, and this DNA integrates into the chromosome of the host. So these are unusual in that they become a permanent part of the host cell DNA. Uh, and it's from the host genome that they're transcribed to make mRNA. So uh, you couldn't make stuff like this up if you wanted to design a, a replication cycle. So this virus. These viruses actually don't replicate and they don't make mRNA themselves. The cell does it. Because the genome is replicating with your chromosomal DNA always. The virus doesn't have any DNA polymerase that it needs to use. And the RNA is made by the host cell enzyme as well. Okay, so that's an interesting strategy. So within the genome, you make mRNA and then protein. Uh, eventually, you take some of those R mRNAs and you package them into virions and you get new particles. So this is unusual that you make a DNA intermediate, but it allows the virus to become a permanent part of the host cell. So that has some advantages, as you will see. The other weird thing here is that, so plus RNA is, is messenger RNA, right? So this should be translated, but it isn't. <clears throat> so this is one virus family where you'll have to remember that this RNA that comes in the cell first thing that happens is not translation. It is copying to a DNA intermediate. So that's retroviruses. And that brings us to negative strands, single-stranded RNA viruses. Lots of uh, pretty nasty pathogens here. We have um, measles and mumps virus. Those are paramyxoviruses here. Rabies virus, which is the bullet-shaped virus. The filoviruses, Ebola and Marburg viruses, filamentous uh, viruses. Influenza virus, the family is orthomyxoviridae. And arenaviridae, famous virus, Lassa virus. Uh, Lassa was the topic of this book called Fever. This was written in, in the 1960s. And when I read this book, it made me want to be a virologist. So this is, this is why I'm doing this today, because of this book. I, I had graduated from college and I didn't know what to do and I was reading and I read this and I said I have to do virology and that's it and that's, that's what happened. So this is a really cool book which takes place in part up at Columbia. Uh, a lot of the victims, the people were dying in Africa, they didn't know why and, and they were shipping them back to Columbia on commercial airliners. <laughs> and it turns out that this is an incredibly deadly virus. If you want to work with it today, you need to work in a highly contained facility, a BSL-4 facility. Anyway, that's an arena virus. So these have negative stranded RNA. So you can predict the first thing that has to happen when this RNA gets into the cell. It's not going to be translated, right? Because it's not plus mRNA. So it has to be copied to a mRNA. Cells can't do this, right? Cells don't have the machinery to copy it. So the virus has to bring in with it in the particle an enzyme that can copy the negative strand into an mRNA. So that's really easy to remember. That's why I say all of this makes perfect sense with a few facts put in your head. You can then trace the lifestyle of all these viruses. So these viruses carry an RNA polymerase in the particle. All the negative strand RNA viruses do that. Um, they make mRNA, which is translated into protein. And then to make more genomes, they go through a plus RNA intermediate uh, to make more RNAs, and those are put into virions. So here's an influenza virus whose genome is, in fact, in eight pieces. So it's one of these viruses that doesn't have a single molecule. It has eight pieces of genome. So the RNA, the negative sense RNA viruses, their genomes can occur in, in one molecule or in pieces. So influenza viruses, uh, six to eight RNA genome pieces, all in the same particle. You need all of them to start an infection. And then some of the other uh, negative strand viruses, the measles and mumps, the paramyxo, the, the rabies virus, their genomes are one long negative strand RNA. And these, this has implications for how these are expressed also, and we'll talk about that later. 
Now, the, the, uh, having a segmented genome is really important because it gives you more genetic variability. So all RNA viruses have enormous variability because their polymerases make errors and they can't correct them. So DNA polymerases can correct the errors they make, but RNA polymerases cannot. And in addition, viruses with a segmented genome do something called reassortment. So when two different, say, influenza viruses infect the cell, all the genes reassort in the cytoplasm, and the new viruses that are produced can have segments from both parents. They have to have all eight segments to be infectious, but they can have a mixture. We call this reassortment as opposed to recombination, which is actual when, when you have a hybrid single RNA molecule. And this is one of the reasons why flu is, is a big problem, because you have reassortment between human and animal strains that are infecting a host. You get new viruses out and they are, can cause pandemics. So this is something we will come back to, and it's a consequence of having uh, a segmented genome. Now some of these negative strand viruses are actually ambisense. They, they're, they're classified as negative sense genomes. You'll see why in a moment. But the genome is actually a mixture of plus and minus RNA. And so Lassa virus is one of those. And also Bunya virus is another example. So what does this mean? So the genomes are on top here. These are actually the two, these vir the arena viruses package two different RNA segments in the virion. And you see the, the green part is plus stranded and then the, the, um, the olive part is negative stranded. So that the RNA that's in the virion has both plus and minus character. In other words, this is equivalent to mRNA and this is the complement. Now when these viruses infect cells, you couldn't predict what was going to happen here, right? So this is something that you only find out by investigation. The RNA gets in the cell. It's not translated, all right? Be probably because it doesn't have a cap at the five prime end. So what has to happen is the virus brings in an RNA polymerase with it and makes an mRNA from this negative part of the genome, all right? And that can be translated into protein, which can then go on to replicate this genome and make uh, mRNA from this, this five prime region. So that's why it's classified as a negative strand virus, because it has to bring a polymerase in. It's not translated immediately upon entering the cell. Even though it has plus stranded sequences, only half the genome or so is plus strand, that can't be translated initially. Mm -hmm.